and I already knew at that moment I completely bombed the interview. Hi everyone, this is Gordon again and in today's video I'm actually going to talk about my worst rejection stories in the past two years during my training contract application process. Well, this is a much easier video for me to be honest because in the past I had to do research on different topics and to make sure that I give you guys the most accurate information. But for this video, I'm just going to speak from my heart about uh, the rejections and what rejection means to me. And I think for most people, uh, they don't want to talk about rejection because they think that is something they should feel ashamed of. Uh, I don't know whether you guys feel like this, but whenever, you know, sometimes we get rejected, we just want to be alone. We want to grieve alone. We want to feel the sadness alone. You don't even want to share those bad news again and again with your family, your loved ones or your friends because you don't want those people who care about you to feel sad at the same time. So I think it's really hard to handle rejection or the feelings arising out of rejection. That's why I make this video to possibly encourage some of you who are going through the same. I think in order for you guys to truly understand my situation and my rejection stories, you need to know a little bit about the context of the story. So I think it's good for me to give you a little bit of background information about myself. I was raised in Hong Kong and for almost 22 years I would say. And living in a big city like Hong Kong, it's pretty competitive to be honest. And when I was young, I was educated to you know be a good person, to do well at, in exams, get good grades, got, get into a good high school, and then get good grades, get into a good university, and get good grades, get, and then after graduation, find a stable job, and then earn more money, have a family, and then have kids, and then having to keep going through the same thing you I've been through. So, I mean, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? Like, the society kind of dictate what you should do in your life, and it sounds pretty normal because most of my friends are doing the same thing. So, I didn't feel like, you know, I should do something different in my life. But the opportunity came because I got into the master's degree in Cambridge. I felt like it's the first time in my life that I could try to do something different from others in terms of living abroad and try to face challenges, you know, in a different country. So I went to Cambridge for one year and I absolutely loved it. Those people are probably some of the nicest people I've ever met in this world because at first you you think like in such a university people may be a little bit more cocky or arrogant but it isn't true because most of the people I met they're just normal people who are really humble and who are really nice people and that's the first time I realized how important working or living in a diverse environment to me about my personal development or my personal growth that's why I'm in love with London or UK in general because of the diversity so uh, fast forward a little bit uh, I graduated in July 2018, which is almost two years ago. That was probably the biggest struggle of my life so far. I know I'm gonna face more challenges, but that was the moment that I kind of need to decide what I need to do with my life. There were basically two options. I mean, after a master's degree, the most common route for you is to just get the hell out of this country and go back to your country and you know be a lawyer in Hong Kong earn a, a, you know a pretty good amount of money why not London I mean I could try and I worked so hard in the past years of my life and that was the moment that I can showcase what I could be in a different country and when I was young I always had this goal or dream of like working abroad like or living with a bunch of diverse people from different backgrounds that's what I always want to do in my life and that was the moment I was an international applicant. Honestly, if you are from UK or from EU, you probably have never experienced that. But for me, I didn't have time. I graduated in July 2018 and my visa, my student visa was going to expire in December 2018. I think I had possibly five to six months to figure out what I'm going to do and whether I could actually be able to work in London for the future or I would felt miserably and then get back to my country. So for me, those five months were so critical. I remember in my first round of training contract application, I literally applied to maybe 35 law firms in London. I know it's not a 
you know, the best idea to apply to so many firms. And also, to be very honest, I didn't tailor them enough to each particular, uh, particular firm. So it wasn't a, the best idea. But for me, my mindset was that I didn't have time. I had to try all the possible ways to get that offer. So I need to submit as many applications as possible. And I remember the first test invite I got was from one of the Magic Circle firms. And it was the Watson Glazer test. Honestly, in the past years, I never failed any test at school in my life. That was the moment. That was the first time I actually failed a test, which was the Watson Glazer test. I mean, the reality just made fun of me and told me that I wasn't good enough. And that was actually the moment I doubted my intelligence. And I doubted whether I actually had what it takes to become a lawyer in London. I thought I worked so hard in my past years and my entire life. But all those hard words are pointless because I failed the test already in the first place without even having a chance to get to the interview stage. And after receiving so many rejections, I finally got an assessment center at one of the Magic Circle firms. I was super surprised, to be honest, because I previously got rejected by firms that are not as prestigious as that particular firm. But I got into that firm's assessment center, so I was supposed to be happy. Well, that's when the disaster came. That was probably the most embarrassing assessment center I ever had. And here comes to the partner interview that really crushed me. During the partner interview, it was like a case study exercise. And I read the case study exercise for a while. I tried to think of all the possible legal aspects of that case study because I found that they would definitely ask me something about law because I'm a law student, etc. But at the end, they didn't ask anything about law. They asked things about, you know, business, etc. I didn't actually read that article in details so that you know all the business aspects of it. And I remember they asked me a particular question about the articles and I didn't know the answer because I didn't read the articles in details. So I just sat there, not speaking at all, for almost one to two minutes. It was miserable and I remember there was this moment the partner couldn't bear with me. So he just even, he even told me like, oh, please maybe you want to take a look at that page 3, paragraph 5. He even need to pinpoint that paragraph for me so that I could answer that question. I think he probably did that out of pity, so it was kind of sad and I already knew at that moment I completely bombed the interview. I was so disappointed in myself, especially I knew that, that I didn't have that many chance and within that 5 months before my visa expired, that was the only chance I had. And I knew that if I, you know, if I went back to my country, I probably wouldn't have the courage to pursue my goal anymore because of the geographical differences and also because you know going back to a different societies you get used to it you get comfortable with your life and you wouldn't want to pursue something greater at least from my point of view something more challenging and also there was another assessment center I got at another city law firms not magic circle firms but it was a really good firm as well and I thought like that was my chance again and I couldn't waste that opportunity anymore I went to that assessment center. I felt pretty good, to be honest. I felt like I'm gonna get that over. And at the end of the assessment center, the recruiter actually told us, well, you will get a call if uh, in the coming days if you got an offer, and you will get an email if you get rejected. You know, next day, my phone rang, and I was so happy, and I picked up the phone. It was my friend calling me. She never really called me, but she did suddenly call me on that particular day, right after the assessment center. I was so pissed off. I was like, that you just gave me a false hope. I waited for two days, three days, four days, six days, almost a week. And after waiting for a week, I actually messaged one of the like, candidates I met in the assessment center and asked her, have you heard back from the firm yet? And she answered, well, not yet. We may get rejected or something. <laughs> I was like, okay. I was so sad after hearing that. I kept waiting. I waited for 10 days, 11 days, 12 days, two weeks. I remember on the 14th day, I was walking on the street near Walthamstow Central because there's you know, where I lived before and I needed to rent somewhere cheaper, you know. So uh, I was walking on the street and an email popped up from that firm. 
and I read the first sentence. Unfortunately, your application was unsuccessful after the assessment center. I didn't even bother, you know, to read the rest of the email. I was so sad and mad at the same time. I felt like I did pretty well, to be honest. Why did I still get rejected? And I remember I was gonna get dinner before receiving the message. So I literally went to KFC right after the rejection email and I ordered the most unhealthy meal I could possibly find in KFC, which is actually not difficult. So I grabbed the meal, I just ate a lot and I was so angry. I ate a lot of fried chicken, etc. I just didn't know why because I worked so hard for this. I improved a lot and I practiced a lot as well. And I remember I received the feedback call after maybe a week or so. And there was this one sentence the HL member told me that I still remember today. She literally told me that, well, you actually did pretty well in most of the assessments. We've, we think that you have potential but we just think that you're not there yet and you're not ready now. Because what do you mean by I'm not ready? Because it actually wasn't a criticism at all. But I didn't know what I can do to be ready. There's just no constructive advice for me to improve myself. Uh, some people, they may chase a training contract for four or five years. But for me, I had limited time, but I make the most of my limited time. I went to Costa Coffee every day, literally working on researching law firm, filled in all the application form I could possibly send off and I make the most of all the opportunities and someone told me that I wasn't ready. It really hurts, honestly. That was the moment I felt like maybe it's time for me to give up, right? Isn't it? And But I just couldn't, you know? Because there were moments in life that you felt like giving up but you just know that you couldn't and you need to keep going otherwise you're gonna regret for the rest of your life. So I decided to stay despite all those rejections. All those rejections happened in September or before September 2018. I have three more months so that I start working as a paralegal at different law firms. And I went to almost 10 open days at different firms. And I remember in the winter vacation scheme, uh, round of application, I submitted like maybe, yeah, thousands of application again. But I actually got even less assessment centers this time compared to my direct training contract application. I didn't understand why, you know, I improved my application techniques and my way of answering questions. It was ridiculous that I got even less opportunity this time. I didn't know what to do honestly and it was already December. I didn't get any offer and that was like a month before I had to leave the country. So, I mean, what can I do? I decided to move to Italy for three months for a legal internship. Part of the plan was I want to stay near London so that whenever I got, you know, an assessment center, I could possibly fly back from Italy to London easier and also less costly as well. But at the end, I didn't get any assessment centers at all. I literally just flew from Italy to London to attend an open day at an international law firm in London. And after that, I actually applied for the direct training contract for that firm, but they didn't even invite me for the next stage of the application. I mean, I, I, just, I just felt, you know, it's so ridiculous that I put all the efforts. I even went beyond what is necessary to get that over. I tried all the possible routes. And honestly, after the internship in Italy, I still got nothing, you know. I flew back to Hong Kong, but I still kept applying for direct training contract in London. I remember uh, when I was in Hong Kong, there was this telephone interview. Uh, because of the time difference between London and Hong Kong, the telephone interview was supposed to be at like 3 p.m. in UK. You know, I had to do the telephone interview at like 10, PM in Hong Kong. I thought it went pretty well, uh, pretty well. and after a week uh, they sent me an email and told me that I got rejected after the telephone interview and uh, you know the feedback was that I actually didn't show that much enthusiasm and passion for the firm. Uh, also because I didn't mention any for some specific deals in the firm to show that why I want to work in this firm etc. I was like I was having a telephone interview how could I possibly show my enthusiasm it's not like an in-person interview that I can show you all the hand gesture and my passion etc that's just life I got rejected by that as well 
And I remember finally at uh, in May or something, I received an email from Baker McKenzie and they told me I was invited to the assessment center. So I flew all the way from Asia back to London and I got that offer eventually. I think the lesson I want to tell you guys from my rejection story is to learn from your mistakes. The first Watson Glacier I took was horrible, but the second time when I took the Watson Glacier test, I did way better. And for the third time, I did even better. The same applies to video interview. The first video interview I did was horrible. The second video interview, I did slightly better. And at the end, the only video interview that I succeeded in was the video interview with my current firm. So you can see, at the end of the day, you just need that one offer, that one successful opportunities. And all your past mistakes actually contribute to you getting that one offer. You should learn from those mistakes and acquire the skills required. And then you will succeed in the subsequent interviews or subsequent assessment centers. Uh, for you guys, you have been living in UK for a long time and this is your country, your home. For me, I was just a random guy from Hong Kong. I came here, I never gave up. I applied for training country even when I was in Italy, when I was in Hong Kong. I just couldn't live with myself with the idea that I didn't try hard enough for something I really want in life. So I hope you shouldn't give up if that's what you want in life as well. If there is someone who knows how it feels to get rejected by many law firms, that person is me and I know this very deeply and I was in a situation that I couldn't get any more chance because of my geographical limitation because of the fact that I had to leave the country. I poured my heart and tears on the whole application process and I think you could do the same and if you do the same, I bet you will get your trading contract very soon. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you enjoy this content, give me a like and also comment down below to let me know your thoughts. I hope this video is very helpful. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about that, honestly. It was just my personal story. I'm not sure whether you guys will enjoy it. But I will see you guys next time. Thank you for your support again. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.